Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television. A reminder of our top stories. National Assembly leadership promises passage of 2018 budget next week as President Buhari meets with Senate President and House Speaker at the Villa. Group takes over APC Secretariat in Ekiti State, demands resignation of State Chairman as controversy continues to trail parties' ward congresses across Nigeria. No bill yet for embattled Senator representing Kogi West, Dino Melae, as court adjourns hearing on application to Thursday, May the 10th. And UN report says 30 children killed and 51 others injured in an Afghan airstrike last month. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you. And on YouTube.com forward slash channels web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu, and then follow the instructions. Now here are some of the pictures that you sent to our eyewitness portal beginning with this one showing a dangerously low-hanging cable from a falling electricity pole in Ijero Ekiti in Ekiti State. Our eyewitness is raising concern over the danger this portends for children or unsuspecting passers-by. He's calling on relevant authorities to do the needful to avoid deaths. Next is this image showing an overloaded vehicle in Suleja, Niger State. Our eyewitness says such act poses a threat to the occupants of this vehicle and other road users. He's calling on men of the Federal Road Safety Corps to enforce some road sanity here. Our final picture is from Yemetu, it goes to the area of Ibadan, the real state capital, showing vehicles partly submerged after a heavy downpour. Our eyewitness reports that this flood is because of poor drainage system in that locality. He's therefore calling on the state government to build good drains to prevent a recurrence especially as the rains are here. We thank you for sending in these pictures and would welcome more from the events in your area. The controversy trailing the just concluded ward congresses of the ruling All Progressives Congress is still generating ripples across the country. Some aggrieved members of the party are making strong accusations and counter accusations about the conduct of the election. From Rivers to Anambra to Imo and up north in Kaduna State, Members of the party have been venting their anger over the conduct of the ward congresses. It's a mixed bag of outcome as far as the ward congresses of the old progressives congress is concerned. There have been allegations of nomination form hijack and disruption of the process. Ward one. In River State, South South Nigeria, the National Congress Committee for the State has received and collated the report of the Congress with the Chairman of the Congress rating it as a success. But not all parties are pleased with the outcome. The timelines he has set, it's clearly impossible for anybody to meet up with. Fine, you start, I came to the police station at about five o'clock when I heard that a member of the House of Representatives was being detained at the police station. And when I got there, nobody was there selling any form. We have facts and figures, we have pictures, we have documents. Focus on the you know, you have seen here, you know, people who have come. You know, even the security agents are there to, you know, affirm whether or not there were congresses in River State. It's a stakeholders meeting here in Anambra State, convened by the leader of the party in the state, Senator Chris Ngigi, to discuss matters arising from the World Congress, which held on May 5th. I think my Congress is monitored by NEC and monitored by the three persons that are supposed to come to my ward. Those who have not done their own Congresses, the committee will tell us what will going to happen. Minutes into the meeting, arguments erupts. Tempers flared up as members disagree with the report of the state chairman that the Congress held. The meeting ends in the face of forcing security men to whisk the minister into safety. 
the meeting remains inconclusive. It was also a controversial outcome in Imo State. One of the parties' faction insists that a new date must be fixed for another Congress because of the disappearance of sensitive materials, while another faction insists that the exercise was free and fair. We, the understand APC stakeholders in Imo State, hereby state categorically that there was no Congress held anywhere in Imo State on Saturday, 15 May 2018, or any other date till now. All my local government chairmen have contacted them to brief me, and I have not gotten any negative report from any local government. So I want to say that the Congress in Imo State yesterday went well. There is also a war of words between the World Congress Committee chairman and a senator representing one of the factions in Kaduna State. While the Congress chairman explains the exercise was successful, the faction disagrees with his report. No member of local government Congress committee has been assigned to go and conduct the exercise in any of the 23 local governments, talk less of from the local government headquarters for ward election and Congress officers to be posted to the 255 ward areas. I don't know whether there is a faction or in APC in Kaduna State. I'm not working under any of the faction. Uh, this committee, we are working within the confine of our uh, rules and regulations governing the party. Congress went free, fair and credible. No any wrong or wrong or free. Political observers adduce the outcome of the Congresses in some states to be an indication of how crucial the 2019 elections will be. Meanwhile, the APC Congress Committee for your state has declared that reports from the 351 wards in the three senatorial districts of the state indicate that the exercise was successful. Members of the Congress Committee, led by Al Haji Musa Halilu Ahmed, confirmed this at a press conference held at the party office in Ibadan, the state capital. Mr. Halilu Ahmed also asked any aggrieved participants to lodge their complaints with a special appeal committee that has arrived in the state to see to such complaints. Meanwhile, the chairman of the appeal committee, Mrs. Pinter Mwazu, has promised to ensure a fair hearing as soon as the committee starts its work. And on the heels of the botched governorship primary of the All Progressive Congress in Ekiti State, a faction of the party today occupied and locked up its secretariat in Adoikiti, the state capital. The group, which calls itself the concerned APC stakeholders, accused the GDIW-led executive of working against the emergence of a particular aspirant and orchestrating the disruption of the primary. The leader of the group, Mr. Kaiode Gunjabi, who claims to be the new chairman of the party in the state, insists the necessary action at this time is to change the party's leadership at the state level. However, the APC chairman in AKT State, Mr. Gidi Awe, describes the purported change of leadership as a joke which cannot stand. We, there, there must be uh, some changes concerning this uh, governorship uh, primary. By what that has happened and uh, with the uh, instruction of the state party chairman and its escrow by using a state escrow to disorganize that election is uncalled for. So as to this, uh, we want to tell you that uh, today we have change the leadership of this party. We believe that some of them are members of our party. If their present action is as a result of uh, what happened on Saturday, it's most unfortunate. Because we voted like any other delegate and we moved out of the stadium in compliance with the policy of the party. But once you vote, you have to go out. That was exactly what we did. So for somebody to turn around this money, I'm saying that uh, they are asking for the result of election. It's the highest display of ignorance. And from here, we're going to Abuja, where Linda Kigbe is standing by with more on tonight's news. Hi, Linda. Hello, Ladi, and good to see you. Now, moving away from the APC Ward Congress, more than 200 billion naira has been saved by the federal government after eliminating ghost workers from the federal civil service.
This is according to the Vice President, Yemi Shibajo, who has reaffirmed the commitment of the federal government to reducing corruption in the country to the barest minimum. Professor Shibajo, who is speaking at the Open Government Partnership Forum in Abuja, explained that the presidential initiative and continuous audit is helping to keep a check on federal payroll and pensions. It is a gathering of experts on governance as the Open Government Partnership Forum opens in Abuja. Speaking on the impact of Open Government Partnership to Nigeria's anti-corruption efforts, the Vice President reiterated the government's commitment at fighting corruption and the successes recorded. The federal government also established a presidential initiative on continuous audit, PICA, housed in the Federal Ministry of Finance, to clean up the federal payroll and pension system across all the ministries, departments and agencies. PICA's work in this regard has helped the federal government save more than 200 billion naira by eliminating those workers. The guest speaker calls on the federal government to be transparent in order to build the trust and confidence of the people, just as the secretary to the government of the federation announces measures introduced by the government to curb corruption. Transparency matters for sustainable development. When people can see how their governments spend public funds and what that achieves, and they have a say in how their country is run, then trust and confidence can be built in political leadership. More than any other time in the history of our nation, the government is waging an unprecedented fight against corruption through asset recovery, prosecution of acts of corruption, instituting new social economic system and culture as well as rebuilding anti-corruption institutions to prevent future recurrence. The Attorney General of the Federation and the National Coordinator of the Open Government Partnership enumerates the essence of the forum. The Open Government Partnership is a global platform of domestic reformers committed to making their government more open, accountable and responsive to citizens. The OGP Week is about creating awareness about what government is doing around transparency, accountability and citizen engagement. It's also one of the pillars of our anti-corruption framework in Nigeria. The Open Government Partnership Week provides opportunities for civil societies, government and stakeholders to co-create transformative commitments to an open, accountable and responsive government. When the news at 10 returns, Investment and Securities Tribunal revives jurisprudence in Nigerian capital markets, clearing backlogs of cases. That's some business news. Please stay with us.